We guarantee freedom of speech to United States citizens through the First Amendment of the Constitution. The First Amendment reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. I start this section on freedom of speech by reading from Sarah Basset's text, A Gift of Fire. Basset introduces freedom of speech by saying, The First Amendment was written precisely for offensive and or controversial speech and ideas. There is no need to protect speech and publication that no one objects to. The First Amendment covers spoken and written words, pictures, art, and other forms of expression of ideas and opinions. The First Amendment is a restriction on the power of government, not individuals or private businesses. Publishers do not have to publish material they consider offensive, poorly written, or unlikely to appeal to their customers for any reason. Rejection or editing by a publisher is not a violation of a writer's First Amendment rights. Websites, search engine companies, and magazines may decline specific advertisements if they so choose. That does not violate the advertiser's freedom of speech. Over the course of many years and many cases, the Supreme Court has developed principles and guidelines about protected expression. When a government action or law causes people to avoid legal speech and publication out of fear of prosecution, perhaps because a law is vague, the action or law is said to have a chilling effect on First Amendment rights. Courts generally rule that laws with a significant chilling effect are unconstitutional. Advocating illegal acts is usually legal. A listener has the opportunity and responsibility to weigh the arguments and decide whether or not to commit the illegal act. The First Amendment does not protect libel and direct specific threats. Inciting violence in circumstances is illegal. Although the First Amendment makes no distinctions among categories of speech, courts have treated advertising as a second-class speech and allowed restrictions that would not be acceptable for other kinds of speech. However, cases in recent years have gone against that trend. Courts have begun to rule that restrictions on truthful advertising do indeed violate the First Amendment. Similarly, since the 1970s, the government has severely regulated political campaign speech, but recent Supreme Court decisions have restored some First Amendment protection for it. Many court decisions have protected anonymous speech, but there are serious attempts to limit or prohibit anonymity on the internet. Basse finishes her introduction suggesting there's more recent movement towards limiting anonymity on the internet. Digital and social media makes it easy to take on an anonymous or avatar-like profile, so it's no surprise recent issues, questions, and challenges are raised because of anonymity. For me, the freedom of speech of ethical issues that arise include what is appropriate action when operating under an avatar or perceived anonymity? What circumstances make it okay to use the guise of anonymity? And is an action taken under anonymity really a freedom of speech issue? Anonymity or perceived anonymity provides some protections from retaliation or privacy but is the provider of the digital media used responsible for any of the acts of the user of the media? What are today's freedom of speech issues related to digital media? How does freedom of speech and privacy connect and relate in today's world of the Internet? As we build our personal frameworks in the digital media world, let's assess how freedom of speech fits in the equation.